Hello debaters, my name is Alan Abbott and I am a former high school national circuit public forum debate competitor and coach and today I'm going to teach you the secret to winning any round whether that is at your local circuit, your national qualifier, your TFC bid tournament, or the national championships every June. Come along, this is going to be a great video to guarantee you some bids and some wins. Now let me explain. For far too long in my opinion, Every debater in this country, along with all of the camps and institutes and debate coaches in the world, have been obsessed with just a few limited things within public forum debate. That is, speaking well, persuading and using your voice, and researching well. While these are all noble pursuits, of course, it's just not enough to win rounds in this day and age. With the progressiveness that is entering public forum debate, that is previously swept policy debate, it is time to innovate what a debate round looks like. There has to be a way to guarantee that we can bring debaters into the next decade, that we can elevate the community and the platform of debate in terms of how you communicate and persuade and ultimately get people to sign the ballot in your favor. Now, Everyone else has been obsessed with just using your voice to persuade, auditory persuasion. Now, what I propose is something that no other camp, no other coach will teach you, and in fact, the NSDA has tried to suppress in the past. What I propose is using olfactory and gustatory persuasion in order to win debate rounds and guarantee the ballot. Now, I am, of course, talking about cooking. In May of 2018, I pioneered an entirely new form of debate, culinary persuasion and food debate. But this has not taken off. Public forum debate has remained solely focused on public speaking. And this is an outrage in my opinion, because in May of 2018, I released my revolutionary and quite frankly, exclusive Parmesan risotto recipe on my judging paradigm. And despite it being talked about by almost every debater on the national circuit, not a single person, not a single competitor has made that Parmesan risotto recipe for me in hundreds upon hundreds of rounds that I have judged at the past two years within the national circuit in the wider debate community. So what do I take this to mean? Well, there's three possible scenarios here. Either A, students don't know how to make Parmesan risotto. Two, students are not being taught how to make Parmesan risotto and other foods. Or D, students are actively being withheld of this information by their coaches, by their schools, and by their debate camps. And I put an end to either one of those three scenarios today by showing you exactly how I make my signature Parmesan risotto and how you should make the signature Parmesan risotto at any debate tournament that I judge at and quite frankly, that anyone else in the world judges at because who doesn't love some Parmesan risotto? Now, risotto is actually a remarkably simple recipe to make and food to eat. And it is really, 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 really good and it sounds really fancy. We actually only have one item that we need to chop up today and that is this yellow or sweet onion, which you can substitute. Um, but instead of using the cutting board, I'm going to add debate flavor um, to, you know, really outweigh on magnitude here. Really, the, the prerequisite to any good risotto, quite frankly, is using your table toast as a cutting board. Um, so I'm going to start by cutting off the onions. Um, so we're going to start by having the onion. And then, of course, uh, this is going to be a little bit slower for uh, cooking novices. But, of course, as you enter the junior varsity of um, cooking and debater at my level, the, the varsity level, you'll become much better. Faster. Now that our stove is on, we can uh, start to heat up our pan. What we're going to do is we're going to take a, uh, a half tablespoon of butter here. We're going to start melting that um, like so. Uh, you're going to let that sit. Make sure to turn down the burner a little bit if you're like me and you procrastinate on um, your other prep work in the kitchen, just like I procrastinated for my senior year in my prep work in the Altamont Lane, my uh, debate prep group. Shout out to David Zell and John Nahas. And John, if you are watching this, you finally know the strategy that would have won you ASU semifinals against Devesh and Eshaw. This certainly would have convinced the judges that those courts were dual. Now, while the butter is melting, we're going to turn on this other bat stove right back here. Now, what that is going to do is that is very, very important. It's actually, in fact, very key and very critical because 
we're going to pour this water, specifically three cups of water in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take, take this chicken broth that is outside of the frame of view of the camera. Um, and we're going to get three and a half cups of that, um, as shown here in my handy little um, measuring cup. Now, keep in mind, if you are a vegetarian, what you can do is you can substitute this with a vegetable broth or a vegetable stock. Um, these are really interchangeable for the purposes of our recipe. We have three and a half cups of uh, chicken broth in this case. We're going to pour that in. Now, we're going to keep the back burner on high because what we really want to do is um, get that starting to boil in the background. Um, and we want to get that up to a boil in order to, because uh, that's what we're going to cook the risotto. We also do have this butter here. We want to make sure that the butter does not burn. Again, this is really important. The butter can very easily burn if you don't pay attention to it. Now, what you're going to do then is uh, you're going to take a little bit of this garlic salt. Now, you can use regular salt here. I prefer garlic salt for the purposes of this video because we are out of regular salt in our, um, our salt shaker. Um, but also, I can justify this um, with a, a BS justification just like a debater would in a grand crossfire. Um, or any crossfire for that matter, or any part of the round action for that matter. Um, which is, you know, just a little bit more of a, a dynamic um, garlicky flavor. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to let the onions um, saute and sear for ab about seven to ten minutes. Um, you can watch it. This isn't an exact science, um, as with uh, the science of winning. Um, contrary to how some select debate coaches might try to position their lectures at certain debate camps. Um, there is no science to winning debate rounds. Um, now, the key to risotto really is simply the rice. This is our Boreo rice. Uh, it's the only rice that you can use in risotto. Now, before we actually put the, uh, the rice into this little pot here, I want to talk wines. Wine is the secret to my recipe, and you know, I have a lot of different options here. I'm only going to use one bottle. Um, this, for example, is a Bruna Belt Leader. Uh, if you're having a nice pizza, a deep dish Chicago style, this is what you want to do. This is really spicy, um, kind of changes flavors in your mouth. But that's not really what we're going for in today's risotto. Um, you can use this uh, Croatian wine from uh, Terra Madre. Uh, I've actually never tried this wine before, so I'm not going to risk. Um, putting it inside uh, the risotto. This Schloss Wackerbach um, is actually from a winery right outside of Dresden, Germany. Um, it, it would be kind of really sweet and fruity uh, and citrusy, and that would go well with maybe certain types of cheeses, um, similarly with this Moscato uh, from Slovenia. But most people rec recommend that you use uh, something simple like a Sauvignon Blanc, which is a little bit drier um, and not really sweet, um, just because of that, it brings out more of that savory flavor um, into the risotto. That, um, this does appear to start to boil, so you're gonna turn it down all the way low um, on the burnt back burner there to ensure that it's just simmering. What you should do, though, is you should take measure out two cups of Arborio rice. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact. Uh, two cups can feed about three to four people, um, maybe with some leftovers. So it's good for like an outbound panel, but if you're, you know, you're going to the Blake Round Robin and there's like, you know, God knows how many like that. 17 judges, um, plus you know, like feed the entire student audience, you don't want to be making a lot of risotto that guarantee you win. Um, now, the key to risotto really is that it's a labor of love. So, what do I mean by that? Well, um, pretty much as soon as you put in that rice and for everything forward, you're going to have to be constantly, especially at this early stage, um, stirring. And the reason why is because you don't want any of the rice to burn, right? You can have a little bit of that charred flavor and the onion and that sort of like gets dissipated out. And so it comes, night brings a sort of like nice smoky, um, rustic flavor with the rice. But if you let any of the rice actually burn and stick to the bottom, um, especially at this early step when it's most prone to do so, you're really shooting yourself in the foot from the get go. Now what you want to do is let the rice cook for one or two minutes with no liquids in the pan. What you're then going to do is you're then going to take the wine. Now, I'm eyeballing it, um, but you really want one, one and a half cups here. And don't worry, this is just because we uh, you know, are introducing a liquid in, and so of course it's going to uh, flare up here. But we're going to add in the wine there. And uh, by the way, good luck getting any of your debate coaches to go buy you alcohol during a debate tournament. Uh, although that is a common practice in some areas, apparently, uh, I had good debate coaches, so that didn't really happen to me uh, in my experience. But your mileage may vary. And really, what you're doing for the rest of the time here is you're going to be stirring. 
Uh, you you want to make sure that the heat is you know not all the way up, but is moderately up. And uh, this part is really introducing the first sort of flavor into the risotto. Um, and this is, you know, really what's going to start off the rice. Just what the rice does is basically you're taking a bunch of liquid and, you, you know, you're slowly adding it to the rice. So you're not making a soup, but what you're doing is letting the rice absorb the liquid and then kind of all of the, each grain of arborio rice actually expands out and then that's how you get your risotto at the end. So you can kind of get that by like how, um, how, how much more content, how much more volume that is. Um, the, the rice will take up in the pan uh, as you cook it more. Now really, this risotto is like any rebuttal you'll ever do, which is less is more. You may want to, you know, add it all at once, all 10 of your disads, all of your turns, all of your dealings, all of your terminal impact defense, yada, 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 yada. Bring out the whole shebang, spray and pray, as my idol Dave Ross once said. However, what you really got to do is, you know, add a little bit at a time. This is just like a rebuttal. Okay, let the judge savor a little bit, really let it sink in. That rice really needs to soak up all of that liquid a little bit at a time, just like the judge can only soak up a little bit of content in the bait round at a time. Now, you can sort of, as it starts to smoke a little bit more, that's a sign that, you know, you're sort of running low on liquid. And so that's when you start to introduce some of the liquid that we have here from our now simmering, are now simmering pot of uh, chicken broth in water. You're going to add a little bit at a time. Um, you should add about one and a half cups the first time, and then three fourths a cup every after or every time after. Um, I'm eyeballing it. I add a little bit more. I need to cook a little bit faster, um, and I just you know made sure I am stirring that risotto constantly. Now, of course, this risotto is like any other vicious cycle. Um, that is, as the liquid starts to evaporate, um, or that is, get absorbed by uh, the rice, you're going to need to add more, so that way you sort of increase the liquid content, at least temporarily, and then it goes back down and you add more. And you need to keep stirring kind of throughout. Now, of course, we need to start talking about cheeses. Parmesan risotto inherently has Parmesan Reggiano. You want it um, you know, shaved or grated, uh, whatever the word uh, you might use. You want some good Parmesan. The Parmesan can be expensive. This is a really good deal at Costco. You can also supplement the Parmesan um, with any number of types of cheeses if you want to make the flavor a little bit more dynamic, right? But Parmesan needs to be the base. At least half a cup of that. If you're really just doing Parmesan, you can do a full cup. I always add a little bit more Parmesan. And then, you know, today what I'll do is I'll use some uh, leftover goat cheese from a prior experiment, a uh, prior uh, in-round strategy that I had. Um, and I'll, you know, throw that in the, you know, try and make a more dynamic, zesty flavor. Uh, but again, sort of try to adapt your flavor uh, to the judge, just like you would a speech to the judge. And now, as our risotto looks more and more done, we're going to turn down the burner uh, to low or even off if your pan is really hot, because um, now we're going to add the cheese. Again, half a cup um, of Parmesan if you're going to use other cheeses. Um, a cup though really is uh, the minimum amount. I always add more, but you can start with a cup. I'm just eyeballing it, just like with the wine. I'm adding a little bit at a time. Um, what you really want to do is you want to start, you know, see the Parmesan cheese act as sort of like a glue um, to the risotto. Um, that's when you know it starts to melt, like so. And then as with risotto, you know, I mentioned uh, it's a labor of love. You really do have to keep stirring throughout. That prevents the risotto from burning. Trust me, this outweighs on time frame. Now, of course, to finish off, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, add the risotto, spread it all around here, 
fully encircle. You know, and add some Parmesan cheese, some garnish, along with some salt, pepper, some herbs in the center. That way it looks yeah, nice. This is our finished product. Um, you know, you'd wipe off the edges there um, and right here to, you know, make sure it's a nice clean plate. Um, and that is how you make a signature Parmesan risotto and how you win any and every round you will ever debate in front of any judge using olfactory and gustatory persuasion.